to show you how to make this super cute basket weave mug cozy. So it's going to have these really cute little basket weave stitches, which we're going to do with the front post double crochet and back post double crochet. And then it's got this adorable little drawstring so that you can make it fit any mug. I'm just making it fit a standard, you know, coffee mug, but I've stretched it over some of my larger mugs and it's been just fine. So as long as your mug is somewhat regular shaped, now the word mug is starting to sound weird. Anyway, for this project, you're going to need some yarn. I'm just using some worsted weight. I think this is an acrylic blend. It's just from my scrap pile. So if I can find it, I will link it down below. If not, then use a scrap yarn. You're also gonna need a five millimeter crochet hook for this one. I just realized that this is actually a red heart crochet hook and I compared it to my not red heart crochet hook and it is way deeper. The hook part has such a deep space that it's, it's, that's why I like it more. It's easier to hook onto the yarn and the yarn doesn't ever drop off of it. Some of the shallow hooks like this, the yarn can drop off a little bit easier. So I didn't know there was actually a difference till I looked at them next to each other, but I'm gonna be using this red heart one today. You're also gonna need some scissors uh, just to cut your yarn, of course, and you will also need a yarn needle so that you can weave in your ends. You can weave them in um, with your crochet hook if you want, but yarn needle makes it easier. So let's get started. First things first, like everything, we're gonna start with a slip knot. Then we're going to chain 14 times. One, two, three, 13 and 14. And then we're going to double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So one, two, three, put a double crochet in there. And then we are going to double crochet across. At the end of this row, chain two and turn. For row number two, we're gonna double crochet into the first two stitches. Then we're going to front post double crochet in the next four stitches. If you don't know what a front post double crochet is, I will link it down in the description. I have a couple of videos that go into a little more detail on that. After you do four front post double crochet, we're going to do four back post double crochet. Again, if you don't know what that is, I will link it down below um, so you can figure that one out before you get this uh, project started. After you finish your back post double crochets, the four stitches, we're gonna do two double crochets for the next two. So there will be two stitches at the end and two stitches at the beginning that aren't going to be part of the basket weave. Then we're going to chain two and turn. Okay, so now we're on row number three. We're gonna double crochet into the first two stitches and then in the next four stitches, we're gonna do front post double crochets. One, two, three. And in the next four stitches, we're gonna do back post double crochets. And then in our last two stitches, we're going to do two double crochets. At the end, chain two and turn. For row number four, we're gonna start as we've been with two double crochets in the first stitch and then in the second stitch. After that, we're going to do four front post double crochets followed by four back post double crochets. And in the last two stitches, you're going to do double crochets. Okay, for row number five, we're going to double crochet in the first two stitches. Then we're going to back post double crochet in the next four stitches, and then front post double crochet in the next four stitches. We're gonna finish up with two double crochets to finish off the row. After that, we're gonna chain two and turn. For row number six, we're going to repeat row number five. So still double crochet in the first two stitches and in the last two stitches. And then those middle eight stitches, we're gonna start with four back post double crochet and then four front post double crochet. 
for row number seven, we're going to actually repeat row number four. So we're going to do two double crochet, four front post double crochet, four back post double crochet, and then two double crochet for that row. For eight, we're actually going to repeat row number five. So double crochet into the first two stitches, back post double crochet into the next four, front post double crochet into the next four, and then regular double crochet in the last two. And for row number nine, we're going to repeat number four. So that's double crochet in the first two, front post double crochet in the next four, back post double crochet in the next four, and double crochet in the last two. That is actually the whole pattern repeat. So we have a nine row repeat from row number two to row number nine, and we're gonna repeat it two more times. So we're going to have a total of 25 rows in the end. It's gonna look like 24 because our first row of double crochets has kind of disappeared and become the first row of front post double crochets. But we're going to end up with 25 rows total. So just go through this pattern, repeating row two to nine, two more times and come back here once you've finished your repeats. Okay, so I know this kind of sounds really complicated the way that I've described how to do this pattern. I'm gonna take a picture of my bullet journal spread which has the instructions actually written out and I'll put it on my website so you can just see it for free um, and the pattern will be there. So check out www.lastminutelaura.ca if you need the written, it's there. I'm gonna finish up the rest of these rows. While I do that, I would love if you could hit the like button. It's a free and easy way that you can support the Last Minute Laura channel and help it grow. And hey, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, why don't you hit the subscribe button? I put out new videos every single day. From Monday to Friday, I live stream from about 7 a.m. until 8.30 a.m. in the morning, and that's Eastern time. And Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, I put out edited videos like this one. If that sounds like it's up your alley, I would love if you join us. The channel is growing and I'm really excited about it and I'd love to have you. So definitely hit that subscribe button. Okay, so I just finished my 24th, 25th row, sorry, it looks like 24. Now what I'm going to do is fold over my little rectangle so that there is an open end and then your closed fabric end. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hook off the loop and I'm gonna stick the hook into the work right in that first stitch. And I'm gonna pull the loop through, just like that. And I'm gonna begin binding together this mug cozy. So that first stitch is now taken. We're going to insert the hook into that first stitch again on the side that the yarn actually came from and then we'll stick it right back in and complete a slip stitch into the first side, I should say. Then we're going to slip stitch into the second stitch and then that's it for the slip stitching together at this point. Now for the next eight stitches, we were talking about the basket weave portion of the project, we're just going to slip stitch on one side. We're not going to be putting them together. I'm just slip stitching one side. And that's just for the eight stitches of the basket weave pattern. And then once we finish with those eight stitches from the basket weave, I'm going to do the same thing again where I'm going to shove that loop back through to the other side to reattach both pieces. Now I'll grab my hook again, and I'm just gonna insert into the next stitch on both pieces of fabric, finish a slip stitch, and then last I'll do it to the very last stitch on both pieces and get my hook in there. There we go. And then I'm going to just do one more chain stitch, pull it nice and tight, and then I'm gonna trim it. I'm just gonna actually tie it to that initial little tail and then I'm going to weave in my ends. Okay, so my ends are woven in and I've turned the cozy right side out. And you can see there's a hole. We've got the two stitches and the two stitches on either side secured, and then there's a hole in the middle. And that's gonna be where our mug handle goes. So we could just take the mug, oops, and put the cozy on it. And then the little mug 
handle sticks out there. And you could actually just call it a day here and call that a finished cozy and it's perfectly cute. Um, but I wanted to be a little extra so I thought we would add a drawstring just to make a cute little accent. So for that I am going to chain 60. You can chain as many as you like to make a good long tie that goes all the way around your mug and ties into a nice little bow. Uh, like I said, it's optional. You definitely don't have to do that. I just think it's cute. So I'm going to chain 60 and then I'm going to weave that chain through the ends of the stitches. So there's these nice big gaps at the top of the cup cozy um, that perfectly weave in and out to end up having both of your pieces of yarn coming out at the front so that you can tie a little bow. It's the perfect number of stitches. So just weave in and out um, on those end stitches with your chain 60 and then tie a little bow and guess what? That's it. That's the whole thing. So let's have the final reveal, shall we? Da 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 da! The cutest little cup cozy! What do you think? Isn't it cute? <laughs> I think it's just a sweet little thing to put on your cup. I don't know, it probably keeps your beverage warm for a little while longer, but it's nice on your hands. It's kind of like having one of those sleeves, except this one you can wash. You can just pop this little guy out, pull the drawstring nice and tight, and use it on a to-go cup, or you could use it on your mugs at home so that you don't burn your hands on ceramic. Whatever you want to use it for, maybe you just want to use it because it's cute and it makes it look like your mug is wearing a sweater. That's totally okay too. Maybe that's why I'm using it. That is it. That is the Mug Cozy. A really easy basket weave make along Mug Cozy. Just two batches of stitches for that um, basket weave. Nothing too crazy, nothing too difficult. Anyways friends, that is all from me for today. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, leave a like. Let me know that you liked it. If you didn't like the video, you know what? Leave a thumbs down. Let me know you didn't like it. I'm trying to get better at this whole YouTube thing, so all of the help is appreciated. Anyways, friends, now it, that's it. I'm done talking. Have an awesome day. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking the video, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!